Hey everyone, my name is Paula Aponte and I am with EXP Realty and Team BC in Lakeland, Florida. And I am just creating a quick video to talk to you today about home ownership and particularly first time homeowners. I compiled a list of questions that I get asked very often and I wanted to go ahead and share some of the answers with you to my channel. If you have not done so already, please be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any new content information that I share. So let's go ahead and get on with it. Frequently asked questions by first time homeowners. Question number one, how do I know if it's time to buy instead of rent? Well, um, question to ask yourself is, do you have a stable job? Probably of at least the last two years. In a pretty similar field, um, you don't want to go from being an entrepreneur or a business owner to having a W-2 to back to an entrepreneur or business owner. So that's what I mean. Um, so do you have a steady and stable job and steady income? Uh, do you have um, responsibilities that you currently take care of that you could show that you pay on time, bills, etc.? cetera? Um, do you have proof of paid on time rent? Do you know where you want to live? What area that you want to be in? That's really super important because renting, you know, it's easy to pack up, not easy, but you know what I mean. You could pack up, move, and move to a new area if you found out, oh, I really don't like this place so much, or it's too far to get to your local supermarket. When you're buying a house, that's an investment, and that's usually something that you stay, you stay, most people stay in the house before they move for an average of three to seven years. Um, you want to make sure that you that it, you're doing it right. Renters, the average time is about a year, so there's a huge difference. Um, as far as down payments, that's a huge question that I get asked all the time. So here's the breakdown. Okay, if you are military, former military there are first time homeowners that fall into that category. You can get 100% financing. That's with a VA loan. If you buy in a particular area that is a USDA approved home, you can also get 100% financing. Both of those loan programs do have particular credit score requirements and debt to income ratio requirements. Another loan that you could apply for, which has the more lenient debt to income ratio requirement is FHA loan. And an FHA loan requires three and a half percent down. And when I'm talking about three and a half percent, I'm talking about three and a half percent of the purchase price, okay? Um, conventional loan is another loan that requires 5% of the purchase price. So these aren't huge numbers, but there's something that to talk about, definitely. You definitely need to have some funds saved up. But there are buyer programs out there, first-time buyer programs, where you can maybe still get 100% financing, closing cost assistance, things of that nature, if you apply and go through um, their program. NACA, N-A-C-A dot com, is one of those examples. You can check out that website and Go through the program. Um, that's uh, a program that is in my area, both Orange County and Polk County, Florida. So definitely go ahead and take a look at that. Um, now people want to know, well, how do I go about getting started? Like, okay, I've decided that, yeah, I have a steady income. I understand how much money I have to have cash on hand, or I've already gone through the home buyer assistance program. Now what? Well, if you've gone through the home buyer assistance program, you probably already know the answer to this, but it's how much house can you afford to buy? If you have not gone through the home buyer assistance program, then you don't know the answer to that. You're going to want to speak to a lender and you're going to want to get pre-qualified or even better pre-approved. Okay. A pre-approval and a pre-qualification are two very different things. And I do have a video about that in my channel. So go ahead and look at that video to find out what the difference is. Um, now the next question is what does the lender need to give me a loan? Well, I'm going to tell you right now off the bat, he's going to need lots of stuff. But the first thing, at least to get the pre-qualification is to fill an application. I have a lender that I typically work with most often because I trust him and he's reliable. Um, and he has an application link that I send to my buyers and say, you know, fill this out. And it's a soft pull. It's, you know, information regarding how much income you make. Obviously, 
personal information, social security numbers and all that good stuff. You send that over and he pulls it and he's able to let you know ballpark of how much house you can afford and if you qualify. Um, now, as far as searching for a home, um, a lot of people will resort to Zillow.com. Well, I'm gonna tell you, don't go to Zillow.com, okay? Because Zillow doesn't always update their information. Zillow's numbers are usually way off when they show you what a Zestimate is, which is the comparables of what has sold in the last 30 days. Those numbers are just not accurate. So people don't get a really good, clear picture of what um, the house that they're looking for, you know, in terms of is it, is it available or is it worth what the, the person um, who has it listed for is saying it's worth because Zillow is saying something different and it just gets really confusing. So what I suggest you do is if you have a realtor that you're working with, most likely they have their own website that is um, synced with the MLS, which is where us realtors pull information and up-to-date data. So um, if you don't have a realtor that has a website, um, you can certainly use mine. It's paulaaponte.exprealty.com. And again, you'll find all of the most up-to-date listings um, that are available on the MLS and it covers pretty much everywhere in Central Florida and beyond. Um, as far as, let's see the next question, how do we write an offer? Well, guess what? You don't have to write the offer. That's my job. <laughs> so that makes it super easy. Um, but we will negotiate and talk together and talk it out about what the best offer can be. I do have a couple of different tips and tricks. And again, I've made a video about that. So go ahead and watch about how to get your offer accepted is another video that I've written about that. Now, um, what if you want to back out of a contract? Well, I will tell you that when you buy a house and you write a contract and you say, I want to buy this house, you are in a legal binding contract. So the only way that you're going to get out of that contract is if, let's say, financing falls through within a certain amount of time. Um, let's say you had a pre-qualification, but you can't get pre-approved. It can be contingent upon you getting that financing or if you have um, a home inspection that fails and is just not you know, something that you wanna deal with, there's a certain um, inspection period of which you can back out of the contract. But if neither of those two things is uh, relevant in the case and you just found a house up the street that just went on the market after you signed this contract, you can't back out of it. It doesn't work that way, okay? Um, now, if your offer does get accepted that we write, then I send out a big, huge congratulatory email and that's when the clock starts ticking for inspections and um, we will have a closing date, a tentative closing date. Usually it's within 30 days here in Florida. So um, at the end of the day, you could have the keys in your hand um, and ready to go in 30 days or less. So um, buying a home in Florida is pretty awesome like that. You will um, go on closing day to a title company where that title company will you know, facilitate all the paperwork and that's where you do all your signings. If for some reason you live really far from the title company, don't worry about that because they do offer remote closings, which they do sometimes charge a little bit for those remote closings. Um, it's usually roughly about $150 to $250 uh, for a remote closing. So um, home ownership really can be something very, very achievable for you. So if it's something that you're, you know, even halfway considering, I will tell you that owning a home is definitely um, a lot less expensive than renting a home. Um, think of it like you're renting a car or you own your own car, right? Renting a car is a little costly, but when you own your own car, definitely not as much. You, your monthly payment is far less than if you just rented it from a local rental company. So you're, um, when you're renting a home, you're making somebody else rich. So stop making your landlord rich, make yourself rich and buy yourself your first home, okay? I'd love to help you out with that process. Definitely give me a call numbers on the screen below and I uh, look forward to working with you. Talk to you guys soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.